Hello, my name's Jackie Smith and I'm the Chair of University Hospitals Birmingham Trust. Every year one of the highlights for us at UHB is the Christmas concert at St Philip's Cathedral. Sadly, of course, this year we can't be together in person, but we wanted to give you the opportunity to enjoy some Christmas festivities from your own home. I hope you enjoy the next half an hour of Christmas music and readings and thank you to all of the talented people who've contributed to this evening's Christmas Carol concert on behalf of the UHB charity and the UHB chaplaincy. Every year, UHB charity helps to raise money to make Christmas in our hospitals just that bit more special, with decorations around the hospitals, with hampers for our staff, and with toys for the, our younger patients. So if you're able to make a donation during the next half hour, you'll help them to do that again this year and next year. So I hope you enjoy the carol concert. And on behalf of everybody at UHB, I hope that you have a very peaceful Christmas and a hopeful new year. Good evening, everyone. It's really great to have you with us today to join with our Christmas carol service. And this Christmas as a trust, we welcome you to our very first Christmas carol service online. It would have been easy to postpone this year's event based on how we as a community traditionally gather together to sing Christmas carols. However, COVID-19 has encouraged us to be more creative and although different, it provides us with an opportunity to have more celebrate with us and to actually come together for one common cause. Most importantly, what it will do is highlight the need for generous donations to support medical intervention, which is very much needed at this trust. As a global community, we cannot ignore that this year has been very challenging. Its impact has created anxiety, stress, and even tears due to great loss of life. There are those who have spent months in isolation and loneliness, and our NHS and key workers have worked tirelessly over the months to breaking point. Yet, although it has been difficult, and whilst we're almost at the end of the year, Christmas heralds in a time for us to reflect, to be thankful, and to be expectant. Speaking of expectancy, throughout this carol concert, a thread of hope may inspire you. So I encourage you to relax and enjoy as we invite you to join with us to a spectacular evening of carol singing with supporters and some very special guests. Thank you.
Now, wasn't that a wonderful rendition? Inspiring words for a great time and a great season to explore Christmas in a deeper level. But let me pose some questions to you. How does Christmas influence you? Is it something that you look forward to? Or is it something that you dread? What emotions does it create in you? And why do we need to hear the Christmas story over and over again? Those questions have possibly conjured up some emotions and responses and feelings within you. But I know that based on this unprecedented year, most can't wait for Christmas to appear because in just a few days, it gives us the permission to enjoy ourselves, to relax, to let our hairs down, and also to be with the ones that we love. And of course, being with the ones we love in our bubbles. But like most people, Christmas conjures up all kinds of emotions for me. There is grief of loved ones that I've lost. For instance, my mother and my father are no longer with me. And that has created a void. And there are those times when Christmas reminds me of those difficult relationships within our families and those awkward dynamics. And there is also an anxiety that comes upon me when I think about the many things that I need to do, the lists I need to create, and also the shortness of time that I have to do it in. But as I also gaze upon the Christmas lights within our town centre, and walk through amongst the shops. It reminds me of that young Jackie, a little girl, remembering how Christmas is important to me on Christmas morning. But most of all, Christmas inspires hope. It's one of those times of the year when we get a keen and excited feeling. As for me, the symbols and stories surrounding the birth of Christmas whispers into my ear, don't give up, keep on going, you can do this. And when we just reflect on the song we just sang, um, Oh Holy Night, one of the lines of the lyric states, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices. So I would like to express to you in two ways in which Christmas teaches lessons of hope and fills me with optimism. I hope they inspire you too. Number one, hope in darkness. Light shines brightest in darkness. In fact, when you light a candle in a dark room, light overpowers the darkness as we can see here with this candle. That's the heart of the Christmas story, an overriding message of hope that is articulated beautifully in the lyrics of O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth. The brightest star in the sky shone that night, signalling hope. And God didn't come into our world with the glaring sunlight of the afternoon sun. No, he didn't. He entered in a time of darkness, of despair, as a satna guiding our way to light, love and peace, and demonstrating how to overcome the most challenging shadows and black spots in our lives. For you, the light may be the presence of a loved one, and simply knowing, maybe, that one year is ending giving way to a brand new one filled with new opportunities. Whatever your light is, Christmas teaches us that even when things are unbearably dark, we should look for the light in every situation. And that's something I always teach my children, always look for the positive in a situation. That's the light. Number two, consider the evergreen. I've actually taken the trouble to cut a leaf or a branch out of my garden from my holly tree. And evergreens decorate our homes and various places at Christmas. And it reminds us of the promise of life and our ability to weather hard times. The evergreen remains unchanged throughout the season, 
It remains stable and it remains consistent. Inspiring a message of hope, reminding us to persevere through adversity and difficult times. The green Christmas wreath or garland point us to perennial freshness of life, our experiences, that even when we feel as though our world is growing stale and at the point of despair, there remains an element of newness and rebirth as a precious chance to start all over again. As we look forward to 2021, our expectations and our aspirations are very many, but as to the challenges that confront us, we are not aware of. So let us reflect on what we have experienced to establish a truer knowledge of ourselves and to consider how these experiences have changed us. Let us be patient and practice patience and understanding amongst ourselves. Let us respect ourselves and others. Let us be kind to another and others within our reach. And by this, we will establish a common culture of hope.
This is Enid's story. It's a Christmas story in our hospital. I've had to change her name and some of the details so that we can uh, ensure her identity. Enid had become the granny of the ward. She'd been there for such a long time. The staff loved her. They all knew her. She knew them all by name and they'd pop in and see her, seek her advice sometimes. She felt loved and she felt wanted in that place. I went to visit her a week before Christmas and unlike her usual cheery self, she was miserable. I asked her, what's the problem? What's wrong, Enid? And she said, I'm going to be discharged home tomorrow. She knew she didn't need to be in hospital, but she also knew that at home she would be alone. She had no family, and she'd be away from what had become her own family on the ward in her community. That day, I was also giving a short TV interview about being in hospital at Christmas. And I'd focused on separation from family and friends, how difficult that was, especially when everybody else seemed to be having a marvellous time. A week later, on Christmas Eve, we were in, visiting all the people who were being discharged. Unlike Enid, they were very keen to get home, even if it was only for a couple of days. But also we were seeing the people who were staying in. And on Christmas Eve, we have an army of volunteers, about 50 of them, who come in. We split them into teams in the evening and go out on the wards and sing carols. The staff, the patients and their families, whether they have a faith or no faith, they love it. They're so touched that people are prepared to give of their time on what is normally a very busy day. So I was out with my team, singing away, getting heartily sick of singing carols, or with a sore throat. And I went on the ward that Enid had been on, and there she was. I was quite anxious to start with. I thought, oh dear, I hope she's not so ill she's had to come back into hospital. But she was very happy. And a few days later, she told me that it was one of the best Christmases she'd had. The ward manager had sat with her over Christmas dinner. They'd eaten Christmas dinner together. All the staff had made a wonderful fuss of her. What a wonderful gift to give to Enid on what turned out to be her last Christmas. Now, it made me think about hospital at Christmas. And if I was asked again, I would change what I say. I was too negative before. But Enid's story showed love, showed joy and hope at Christmas in the hospital. The Christmas story can do that. It can bring light to the darkest and most difficult places. So I hope that like Enid you find some light this Christmas for yourself and for those you love wherever you are and whatever the circumstances. Hi, I'm Gordon Gilchap and I'm here to tell you about a wonderful choir project that it was my pleasure to be involved with. Uh, I got a call from Catherine Worth about two years ago now asking me if I'd like to be involved with this project. I of course said yes, I'd be delighted. Uh, a song was created written by my friend Carrie Martin called You Make Me Believe. The track was recorded in a church in February of this year uh, and the choir in great form we had the wonderful Paul White recorded the session for us, the wonderful Oliver Waitman on keyboards, and Helen Clayton led the choir on the day. It's sadly fantastic. We're very pleased with it, and we'll hope that you're going to donate to this wonderful cause, and thank you for watching.
Good evening everybody, I'm Charlotte Schofield, Director of Fundraising at University Hospitals Birmingham Charity and I'd like to say a huge thank you to you all for watching our Christmas Carol concert this evening. For us all this year Christmas is going to be very very different but we still wanted to give you the opportunity to listen to some music and reflect from your own homes. I'm sure you'd all like to say with me a huge thank you to everybody that has made this evening possible. This year at UHB Charity we want to make sure that we can bring the Christmas spirit to our hospitals and bring smiles to all of our staff and patients. If you'd like to support and donate then if you're watching this evening on Facebook please click the donate button or if you'd prefer please visit our website hospitalcharity.org where you can find out more information about the virtual gifts that we have on offer. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching and everyone that's been involved. I hope you have a very peaceful Christmas and a hopeful new year. Thank you.